Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another NKC design tutorial video. In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can make your images look more cinematic and how you can enhance them even further through the process of color grading. And I know when most people hear that term color grading, they only think like film or movies or like a motion picture, but yes, you can actually color grade your uh, still images in photography and I actually really suggest it. It's a really great way to just like push your images that much further. But that's enough intro talk, let's go ahead and get straight into the tutorial. And this is an image that I took yesterday during some rooftopping in center Philadelphia. Um, it was a lot of fun, kind of sketchy as it, like rooftopping always goes, but it was definitely a good turnout. And I'm gonna show you how you can take this flat, very boring image and enhance it to something like this. So as you just saw in that image, the blues in my jeans and the blues like in the sky, their hue was more teal and like the oranges in my, like the orange color in my boots and the orange in like the buildings were more saturated and almost like towards like a like orange red color. And that's the exact look I'm gonna try and like show you guys how to get today. So first thing that you can do is go to lens correction and you're gonna enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. That's always like a standard thing to do, especially with this image that I took uh, yesterday because I took it with the zoom lens. So I already know there's gonna be a lot of vignette and distortion, especially in the horizon. Next thing you can do is open this panel, camera calibration, and this is where the color grading is gonna start. You're gonna go down to blue primary. In your hue, take that and drag it to the left. You're gonna drag it a pretty significant amount somewhere around like 50 40 somewhere in there feels good and as you can see like these blues aren't really looking like like pure blues anymore they're going more teal and you're actually going to take the saturation and boost that up not a whole lot actually I'll just like do something like 25 let me see how that looks yeah 25 is good Next, you're going to go up to your hue, saturation, and luminance panel. It's pretty good to have it on set to all so that we can just see all three of these tabs at once without having to like switch through them up here. But in our hue, we're going to take our oranges and we're going to drop those down. Let's do like negative 10, uh, like negative 15. Sorry, I'm the most indecisive editor on the spot, but negative 13 feels good. I'm in dropping it down, uh, like with negatives, it's going to make your oranges more, uh, like towards the red. And then with your blues, you can actually just take those and drag them to the left to get more, like even more towards like a green teal color. Not a whole lot. Uh, like negative 31 is cool with me. Then in our saturation, you're going to go and take your oranges and increase those. Let's like do 50. Um, it's like actually 45 looks good 45 with the oranges and then um, take your blues and you can saturate those some more maybe around like 30 30 is cool then after that you're going to take your luminance and this is going to kind of like I use luminance as a way to like it's weird like to desaturate my colors without actually desaturating them so it's going to just brighten them but it kind of takes some of the color out of them which is like a good way to like still keep the color but just brighten them I, like I know I'm like just kind of going in a circle with what I'm saying but I'm going to do the same thing with my blues and bring those up as well and just to show you what that's done so far mind you this right here the before I had messed with the hue saturation and luminance this is still uh some of the like hue shifts that we did in camera calibration so this is only pushing it even further which is uh getting us closer to that uh teal orange look I'm going to close that panel and then just go right back up to um go back up to my basic panel uh for my temperature I'm going to warm it a little bit and just with how my sky is I like it's kind of blown out yes it was a cloudy day yes it was like an overcast sort of so I know there's not going to be too much detail I'm going to be able to pull out of those clouds but I'm going to take my exposure and drop it down not a full stop but maybe just like minus like 0.7 minus like 0.75 something like that is cool with me and then to get some of that detail in my sky back I'm going to take my highlights and completely just minus 100 drop them as much as I can uh, just to really like push that and then same thing with my whites not all the way down but like maybe like a third of the way down and then I'm going to take my shadows and actually boost those up and then 
drop my blacks to about like halfway there. But minus 50 is cool with me. And then after that, um, I know I normally don't do anything with clarity, but since this is a landscape, I'm still just going to be very subtle with it. I'm just going to bring that up like 15. And then with vibrant, I'm actually going to drop that down. Um, I wish I could tell you what the difference between like vibrance and saturation is, but just through like using the sliders, it seems like vibrance will do the same thing that saturation does, but like on a more subtle scale. So like I don't really touch saturation that much um, just because it makes like more drastic changes quicker. To bring some more blues into my sky, I'm going to use this little, I don't know what we can call it. Uh, it's actually called a graduated filter. So there you go. Shout out to Lightroom for like teaching me something right there on the spot for you guys. But I'm going to take that and I'm, I've dropped it down already to like, to like uh, about negative nine to get it a little bit more blue. And then um, I actually don't really care about the saturation, but I'm just going to take that and drag it over. And just to show you, um, if you use this marker, you can like toggle it on and off, but this is on and that's off. So like it just subtly adds a little bit more blues to my image to like push that a little bit further, especially in the sky, since uh, the sky was just predominantly gray yesterday with the overcast. Uh, next after that, I'll actually go to my brush tool and I'm going to make my boots a little less orange. So I'll take the saturation down and then just paint over. Uh, my boots a little bit still keeping them orange but not as as harsh not as strong not as saturated and to show you um if you ever want to see like okay what have i painted over in my image with the brush tool if you just hover over the marker which the marker sh is like going to be placed wherever you make your first like brush stroke and then if you just hover over it not click it or anything um it'll show this red mask to show like, okay, here's the area that you've painted over. So that's just a really good way to see like, if you ever forget or like just lose your track of like, okay, what have I done with the brush tool? That's an easy way to just go back and see like, here's what you've done. Um, next we'll go to our tone curves because you know tone curves is just about everything to me. Uh, anchor point in the shadows, anchor point in the midtones, and an anchor point in the highlights. We're going to go to our blacks, take our blacks anchor point, lift those up, add another anchor point right in here, kind of drop that down and then take the shadows anchor point and just go a little bit over to the right. Maybe somewhere like right there. Take our whites, we're gonna take the uh, anchor point for that and drop those down a little bit. You're gonna see a lot of the changes in the sky and then take the highlights anchor point and raise that up a little bit. That's just added a little bit of contrast to our image. Next, we're going to go to green to add a little bit of color into it. Same thing. Drop your anchor points and shadows, midtones, and highlights. And then take the greens, or the, uh, sorry, the black anchor point for the green channel. And then just raise that up a little bit. Just a little bit. And then I might throw in another anchor point just to, like, kind of align this, uh, align my line back on, like, the native diagonal that it's on. And... That's pretty much it. That's a really simple way to get to that uh, to get to that uh, teal orange look. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a minute, but that's essentially it. You're gonna just take your blues, take the hue, shift it over to like a more greenish teal color. Take your oranges, and then you're gonna shift those over to more like a reddish orange color. And that is the easiest way I can tell you to how to get your images more cinematic in a faster way. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.